Hi, welcome to the Thunderbird Handcrafted. My name is Genevieve and I'm so excited for you to join me today for today's video, which is how to not sell yourself short as a maker when selling your products so that you can properly price them for the market that you're serving. I had a lot of people ask me this question on a prior video, which was all about how to be successful uh, being a maker at craft fairs. So I wanted to dive in a little bit into my strategy into how do I properly price my items to make sure that one, the price is the right price for my market, but also so that I am paying myself and replenishing what every maker wants, that kind of honey pot to feed my addiction to fabrics and hardware and all of those good things. So join me today, click subscribe so that you can be in the know of when the next video drops. There are timestamps along the bottom that take you to each of the different steps in this video. And of course, like I share every video, uh, towards the end I will be sharing the healing part of learning to properly price the items that you make. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing two patterns. One is like a very structured bag, something that's a little bit more time consuming and how do I price something like that? And then we're also gonna talk about production products, which I've talked a lot about in past videos about how they're great for craft fairs and so forth. There is also, because I don't believe in just giving you the information, I also believe in sharing it as well. There is a free downloadable template. There is a link in the details to my complete system of of how I go about pricing my products to resell, whether that be a very structured bag product or a very production product that I've talked about in the past. Before we dive into the actual pricing of the products, I wanna first share, of course, the sewing part with all of you. So there's two items that I'm showing just very quickly, me sewing them, but I highly recommend that you go over and you purchase these two patterns and watch the videos. So the first pattern is the Spencer Ogue Curvilicious Wallet um, Clutch. This, this is such a fun sew. Um, I use this really awesome uh, Hocus Pocus material. Uh, I also have tons of uh, witchery, stitchery hardware from Geek Hardware on here. Beautiful, beautiful light vinyl from Wonderground Fabrics. Um, so you're gonna see this come together. This is where uh, I'm sharing today, kind of how do I price something? How do I go about the, the system for pricing for something structured like this? Because I know many of you are advancing into, just like me, a more structured product. And of course, Apollo has to be heard, right? <laughs> Um, the other product that we're going to talk about is the Oka Roots Coffee Sleeve Template. So Jess over Oka Roots makes these coffee sleeve templates out of acrylic. Uh, and she has two videos, I think, now. I'll have the link for those as well on making coffee sleeves. Coffee sleeves are also a great production product. So very different way um, of pricing something like this compared to something like this. So when it comes to pricing your products that you're making properly, it really comes down to three things. It comes down to your materials, your hardware, and your time. Okay. Those are kind of the main three things. You could put your hardware in with materials. Um, but many times I find if you do that, sometimes us makers who are sewists, we forget about the hardware and the hardware is a very expensive piece of the puzzle, okay? And some items don't require hardware. So if you're a maker who's looking to do mass quantities of something, trying to eliminate as much hardware as possible can really create a price point that uh, helps you sell more, um, especially if you're losing margin by selling on Etsy or you're losing margin um, through, through any system like PayPal anything like that, um, that is taking a piece of the puzzle, you're paying for these services, um, you wanna try to not have as much hardware as possible because you're, you're, you're paying a, a premium for that. So again, your, your time, your materials, your hardware, 
Those are the three most important things when it comes to pricing. It also uh, requires you to think about the types of items, like I said. Are you creating more of an artisan pro product? That's what I would call the Spencer Oag clutch here, okay? This is a very structured, more artisan quality. It looks like something that someone could buy in a store, okay? Um, when I made this, my husband was like, honey, people aren't going to believe that you made this, that this is handmade. That is what I would call an artisan quality product, okay? So are you making those types of items? Are you making production items like the doggy bandanas from last week or are you making the coffee sleeves, okay? That's a more production type item. That's a different type of pricing, okay? Or are you making custom items? We're not gonna talk about custom products today. That might be a future video, but custom is a very different type of pricing structure. Today, we're just gonna talk about the two, the artisan quality as well as the production quality. So I highly recommend watch my little quick sew through of these two things uh, and take some time to go over and download the patterns this is a free pattern from Jess, I believe. Uh, and this is a paid pattern with a video from Spencer Ogue and it's just so well done. So check them out. talk about the elephant in the room a little bit <laughs> and that's that as makers and as creatives uh, we are not always the best organized we might have certain systems that are very organized we all like to organize our hardware by colors and our fabrics by rainbow we all like that part of the organization but when it comes to organization that could help you in pricing your products I'm sure this is the area that many of you struggle with because it's the area that I struggled with um, I still struggle with it, it it requires me to put in the effort uh, and so I want to share a little bit of my system but I don't want to share that without you knowing that this is an area that I think every creative struggles with because it's just not that part of our brain that we like to use <laughs> um, but it's not a part of our brain that we can't use and so I want to really encourage you that in this part of where we're looking at how can you be more organized in certain areas uh, that it allows you to think about how can I make this fun make it more creative and see the results of it because I, I, I think for me as a creative when I see the results of doing something that is what encourages me to do it how many of you have a bunch of packing slips laying around how many of you throw them away don't even look at them you're like I have that in my email <laughs> Um, yes, I'll raise my hand. For a long time, that was me. But as you become more focused on how can I return the money I've spent and 
possibly make a profit, make this something that becomes my full-time job. Um, it is possible. It just requires this end to be something that you think about. So one of the things that I do is I keep an inventory. Having this system truly has helped me think about the project that I'm making, making sure one, that I have everything that I need. How many of us have started a project and we're like, oh, I, I finally have the material, right? Finally have the material. I'm ready to start that pattern that I saw that I downloaded. I, I bought it months ago. I'm ready to make it. You download the pattern and realize, uh-oh, I need a piece of hardware or I don't have that long of a zipper um, or I don't have that type of interfacing. Whatever it is, we've all been in the position where we're ready to start a project and we realize we don't have one piece of it. And now we need to go order it. And now it's gonna take two more weeks until we get that item. We're gonna start another project in the process. How many feel it? Put it in the comments. I've been there, I do it, okay? I still sometimes do it, even with, and that's why I'm saying this system is a system that I use. It's getting me on the track of pricing and also organizing me so that I can be working projects and completing them, okay? So I have all of my packing slips. I save these. I really should probably file them, but they go in the bottom drawer of my Creativity Corner desk. Every week or every two weeks, I try to make it every week, but about every two weeks, I load these, what is purchased. I use this as well as my shop app. If anybody uses shop when they purchase, I use this in my shop app to create a Google spreadsheet of everything I have, the project that I think I'm going to be using that item for. Uh, you'll see all of this in the downloadable um, template, all the different fields that I have in my Google spreadsheet so that I can sort it. Um, so that I can see when I'm ready to make a project, am I missing anything? Do I need to order anything? Do I have leftovers of something else from another project? I keep these just because I'm part of that generation that learned both analog and digital. I'm an Xennial. Uh, and so you probably do not need to keep these if you're going to pull the information from your email and your shop app and download the free template. The link is in the details for you. And I, I really believe put this in place. And I think at least after about three months of doing it, you're going to see some nice results and you're going to feel really good about it too. So I'm going to share with you now my screen of the spreadsheet that I create and how I use that. That is one piece of the puzzle. The other piece of the puzzle is timing. Okay. And they're in this, in the downloadable, I do have uh, the ways that you can go about timing yourself because your time should be paid for. And it's really important to remember that. So if you're on the struggle bus of, you know, I can organize everything by color, but when it comes to organizing so that I know how to price, stay tuned. This video is for you. Okay. So here we are at my project inventory spreadsheet. Again, you do not need to remember any of this. It's all in the downloadable template uh, that you can get by the link in the details. So this is my system. This is how I go about doing it. Every, uh, about every two weeks, I collect my packing slips, my email um, receipts, and I try to fill this out as best I can uh, so that I can keep track of what I have in stock, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm going to sort this uh, by the curve illicit clutch, which is the item that I'm looking to price. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in Curvilicious Clutch, Spencer Ogue. All right. And here is all of the items that I am using on that clutch. Now I'm noticing that I am missing um, rose gold swivel hooks, which is an item that I added later on. As well, do I have the rainbow? Let's see, we might need to add a few things. So I'm gonna have to select all. I'm gonna go to webbing and see is my rainbow webbing in here. It is a 0.5, let's see. 
Yes, pastel unicorn webbing. So that is also the curvalish. Why isn't it coming up? Curvalicious clutch. Okay, so that item needs to also be in there. And then I'm also going to look for swivel hooks, which yes, also. So I have I have rainbow ones here. It is rose gold. But since that is I yeah we're just gonna for now we'll use that but i have rose gold ones so i need to um update that then all right but just for showing you all how this works right now i'm going to sort by the curvilicious clutch all right so this should have everything that goes into making that bag making that project so what I'm going to do is I am going to find out the sum of all of these items, okay? This is my sum total, all right? So the average, when, I, when you divide that by however many items are here, is 16.05. But I want to divide it by the average of how many I'm going to be able to make with these supplies, okay? So I already know that each of these gets a special tag, bag tag, and I only ordered 10 of them, okay? So I need, in my little notebook, I'm going to write my sum total for the curv Curvilicious Clutch supplies is 240.77. I am only going to be able to make 10 of them total, all right? And I'm going to divide that number by 10. So 240, if I'm in the right place on my phone, 240.77 divided by 10 is 2407, okay? So... 2407 will pay for the materials and the hardware for one, one of them. I'm going to be making 10 of them. So what I want to do is, and this is, this is completely standard. This is not being unethical. This is not uh, being greedy. I want you to be, it's not being selfish. I want to be very clear that the fashion industry, the reason that they can offer you 35, 45, 50, 60 percent off is they are they have huge margins. So even if I times that 2407 by two, okay, and I charged $50. So 2407 by two, we're going to get it directly 4814. And I charge $50 because now I have to think about, I'm just going to put that out there. So I'm going to say I'm going to charge double, all right, for that clutch. That's the materials, all right? We need to think about the time. So for $24.07, all right, that's paying for my materials for one. Now, how do you figure out your time? So the way you figure out your time is you time yourself, all right? So if you're going to make more than one of these, and this is where, especially when it's a more artisan product, this is where you find, especially for me, is I offer testers. So this was my tester. This was the first run through of this bag for me. So this is on my site for a specific number because it's the first time I made this bag. So not it's not every way that I would want it to be, all right? It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with it. There's just things that I would want to change when I sell them at the full amount, okay? So when I sell these at 50 some dollars, all right, there's gonna be some differences. One, I did not have the swivel hook for my, for my wristlet. So I'm good. there's going to be a swivel hook here. This one does not have one of those tags that are more expensive, okay? It's going to go on the inside. There's going to be a lining on this back clutch area as well, all right? 
So this was my first run through. It took me all day. Okay. I'm also not uh, attributing to the um, stabilizers that are in here. I did not add those into the price of, of what we just figured out. Okay. So this took me a whole day to make. All right. If I'm making more of these, just like everything else, as we make more, we get faster. Okay. So this is why I record myself. So I would make at least three of these. And the third one, the length of time it takes me for the third one would probably be my average time that it's going to take me to make these. All right. And then I would think about what do I want to be paid per hour? Okay. And so I would charge what I would want to want to be paid for one hour of work on top of how much I paid for the materials. Okay. And if that isn't at 50% yet, so not doubling the cost of the materials, I would at least be at 50% because you should be paid. You are worth the time you're putting into this. Okay. Your sewing expertise, your crafting expertise, your ideas, your thought leadership is all worth the time it took to get to that point. All right. So again, you want to figure out the cost of materials of how many can you make with the materials you have. Okay. So that's our, for this clutch. That's going to be the $24 and seven cents per clutch. If I'm making 10 of them, then I'd want to figure out how long does it take for me to make one on an average basis. So I'd make at least three of them. All right. The third one, the, the time it takes for the third one, how much am I getting paid an hour? Okay. I would add that on to my 2407. And if that did not reach the $48.14, I would make sure to meet at least 50% more. Okay. That is the low end in the fashion industry. Okay. You're worth more than that. I promise you. So I hope that explains how to do this. That would be for an artisan item. We're now going to talk about how do we price something that's more production, like the coffee sleeves, okay, or the doggy bandanas. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how do you price something that's more production, like the doggy bandanas from last week's video, or something that's like a coffee sleeve, something sh simple, sweet, to the point type of maker project. This is where I go to do my pricing, um, and this is a very common way for that sort of thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna type in dog bandanas, all right, and we're gonna find a lot of different types of things, but I I'm gonna try to look at quality, all right. I'm gonna look at the quality of the items, um, you know, where I feel I'm at. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous items, fall dog bandana. Um, all of mine do have labels on them. Okay. So I'm going to try to find ones like here. So that $12, let's see, $11. Here's high end $17. Let's see what makes her special. They are, they're still tie on though. Oh, does she? Oh, but she has a snap on them. So that's the high end there. Okay. So I would look and see. There's so many different prices here. I know that it can get very overwhelming. Here's a scrunchy bandana pattern. So just the pattern itself um, from someone is $17, $8. So this one just goes through the collar. So what I usually try to do, again, you wanna think about the cost of your materials, okay? So depending on the cost of your yardage of fabric, um, I definitely wouldn't go with some of these cause I did not, I'm not using, um, for mine, I'm not using flannel, okay? I would wanna look at my cotton canvas versions. I would look at the, the average of these. And so when I look at the cost of my fabric, how much am I getting out of the fat quarter or whatever I purchased? I would look at that. How many did I make? Just like we do with, with our, our more artisan products. But then I would come here to Etsy and I would say, how much am I charging? Because it looks like the average star seller price 
is somewhere between 10, 14 bucks. All right. I try to cater my production products kind of to that middle range. So I, I end up selling mine for 12. Okay. So that's real. It's more, I shouldn't say a guessing game. It's more, make sure you're paying for your, for your materials. Okay. But also think about how you, what is the audience you're catering to, to, to make them? Cause you're going to be able to make a lot more of these. And when you think about the cost of your fabric and how many you can make $12, you're making a decent margin. You're definitely not doubling your margin on something like this. And the reason you're not is because you can make so many more of them at a time. Okay. The reason that we double our, our margin when it's a more artisan item. Okay is because it takes you longer, all right? So hope that makes sense. Let's look at coffee sleeves and see see where they're at because I haven't thought about pricing for those yet. So we're gonna look here and see, okay, so here's a very custom, so you get your name on it. Um, these are like the coffee, um, what do they call them? Coffee cardigans. Here's sleeves. Okay, this looks like, this looks around like what I'm probably going to do, definitely. So they're, they're 15, so I would jot that down. Okay, that looks more like Jess's pattern. Um, These, those look a little bit more insulated, I think, than what I'm going to do. Let's see here. Here's one. So $9, that's probably more along the ranges of what I'm doing. Now remember the one big thing here on Etsy is they're all getting fees taken out, right? So they're also attributing that they're gonna lose some money to fees. Let's see here, I'm not doing a handle. Here, that's the pattern. So this pattern is four bucks. Okay. Eight fifty. Here. Eight fifty. So that's another around that. So this is where I would decide, am I am I how am I going to line these? Am I lining them with something that's a little bit more? Are they reversible? All right. I probably think about that. If I'm going to offer something that has a little bit more insulation and reversible, I probably would go more towards that high end $15. Okay. Um, I probably would end up going more to that high end if I was going to add a whole lot of more um, to it. Mine are going to also, some of them are going to have a tag. So maybe some of those that have a tag that's very specific to, to that coffee sleeve, maybe those are going to be more on that higher end. And then have some medium area ones that are more in that like $10 range. Um, so again, there's no way that I'm doubling the price with these of making these. All right. Um, but they're still in that very production time frame that I can make a decent margin. All right. On them uh, and still pay for my materials. Okay. Where I end up paying my time in production items is selling large quantities. And that's where knowing what fairs to go to, knowing um, you know, how to promote them on your on your group or your website, wherever you're you're selling them otherwise, that's where production items end up really um becoming something that you can pay for that time. So um, if you're interested in learning more about that, we can talk about that in the future as well. But that would be how I would go about pricing the coffee sleeves or anything that is more production. So by now you might be thinking, oh my goodness, Genevieve, this is not something that I even want to think about. This is why I have not uh, overcome this hurdle of feeling like I don't know how to price things because it feels like there's so much involved in it. I promise you there's not. Download the free template start with one piece of it. Maybe you just start timing yourself when you're sewing and realizing how long is it taking me to make these bags? How long is it taking me to make a bandana or 15 bandanas? Okay, just start there. All of that becomes a realization and becomes habit. Okay, so 
Take it one step at a time. That's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. It's all an experiment. Let's talk about the healing part. So I think the healing part for me in this journey of discovering how best to price my products has been a couple things. One of them is knowing that you're not for everyone. Um, I think it, it's so hard, especially if you have a people pleaser tendency that you just want to please everyone who says they like what you make. Um, it's very difficult many times for me when someone messages me and says, hey, could you make me a custom? I like that bag, but I'd like you to make it with this instead, or I don't necessarily like that color. It's very difficult to kind of step back and not say yes to everything. And so I want to really encourage you that one of the healing parts of this piece of being a maker is knowing that I'm not for everyone and that that is okay. One of the things I hear all the time is being afraid to charge what something is worth because we struggle with what we're worth. And so that is another piece of the healing part is getting to a place of recognizing not only does your work have worth, but you have worth as well. The knowledge, the time, all the things that's taken you to get to the place you are in your craft or in your thought leadership or whatever it is as a creative entrepreneur you're sharing with the world, you are not just coming out, you know, not knowing anything. And, um, you know, you're not, you know, your first item you ever make is not something that most of the time is not something that you're selling. It's something that you're making because it brings you joy. And so I think it's so important that some of the healing parts of this is that you remember that you, you have worth which means your work has worth as well. Uh, and remembering to charge for that worth. People will pay for the value of all that time of sewing. Um, people will pay you for that because they appreciate that time, just like you do, of that you've put into making those items. So remember that the healing part is really this life lesson of one, you don't need to be everyone's cup of tea all right, and that you have worth. So it means your work has worth as well. I hope that this has helped you in just overcoming that. If if you could share with me in the comments where this is hitting home for you uh, in the healing part, um, if your struggle with, if your work has worth, if, you know, is it just a handmade item? It's not just a handmade item, I promise you. So I really wanna encourage you to download that template and just start with one step of this. So how are you feeling about pricing your items? Tell me in the comments. Um, don't sell yourself short. You are making beautiful artisan quality, production quality items. You've spent a lot. Make sure you're receiving what you've spent and make something for yourself. Be fair. Everybody's worried about being fair. If you follow the system that I'm sharing with you in this video today, I promise you, you are being completely fair. All right. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Like I asked earlier, tell me where you struggle with being organized with this sort of thing. Um, tell me a little bit, maybe perhaps of um, where you struggled with the worth of your items. You know, maybe it's, it's more internal for you. Um, follow through with just taking one little step uh, and I can't wait to hear from you in the weeks ahead as you're using this pricing strategy um, for the items that you're making. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. Make sure you're subscribed so you get the alert for next week's video. Uh, and feel free to leave a comment, share with your sewing community friends. If you'd like to see the items that I'm selling and sewing, you can find the link to our handcrafted shop. If you would like information about our farm, we do have a weekly newsletter that I share every week of everything from my background in women's wellness, as well as our glamping and sewing. Uh, feel free to subscribe to that. We are planning a women's wellness and creativity retreat specifically for women entrepreneurs, creative entrepreneurs next spring. If you'd like to be the first to know when tickets are available, make sure you subscribe to that newsletter because that is where you're gonna get all the information uh, and check out all the links. Check out Spencer Ogue, check out Jess over Oka Roots. 
Thank you again so much, and I'll see you next week.